Hello and welcome to episode 65 of Throttle Stop Garage, where we're going to have a look at how we put flanging on the doors in order to make the fiberglass mold for these carbon fiber parts. Okay, so with the bodywork all finished uh, in the last episode, we're now going to have a look at putting the flanging on these particular doors. Uh, there, it's not as easy as I thought it was going to be, I can tell you that straight up. You can see over my shoulder, I've already been working on these, so I'm taping this uh, just a little out of phase. I wanted to make sure it was going to get done. Uh, but this is actually a good deal more complicated than I thought it was going to be. But it's not really all that bad, it's just... There's uh, a lot of shape in the door that I'm sort of not used to working with. And I'm going to use some new uh, techniques in, uh, in this particular episode that I hope will help as you're trying to get your carbon fiber projects uh, started or finished. All right, so I'm just getting started to put the flanging on the doors and I just thought I'd show you a few of the challenges that we're going to face in getting this flanging done. So before you start any of your flanging projects, like before you're gonna start making your mold, uh, it's really good to consider every little detail. Uh, so for example, you can see in here that the door uh, turns quite sharply in now you can put the flanging on and, and sort of bring it around to this, but it would be a lot easier if we were just to say square off this entire corner area to make the skin. So that'll be easier. Uh, when I was first prepping the doors, I ground out the welds that normally are here between the join between the window frame and the door skin. Uh, so those have been removed on both sides and I've done a really careful job. Again, we'll have to square this corner up as well right here. There's really no way around it. And then I've done a really good job of cleaning this under lip just to make sure that the glue sticks. Uh, I'm now starting to run out of hot milk glue and all the stores are closed and I can't get more. Uh, then you can see pretty clearly in the middle of the frame where the ruler is now sitting in. All right, so we've got a flange that's attached to the door skin itself. Okay, and that flange holds the rubber wiper that rests up against the window and prevents water from getting in the door. Okay, so that's a part that I'm actually just gonna remove from the door, but it does have to mount to the door skin. So this door skin actually wraps fully around, like it goes fully around this corner and doubles over. It goes in about, it's about 20 millimeters is all that it goes in, so it doesn't go in very far. And in order to get this door built, I'm going to uh, add a, a, a supplemental piece that I will then subsequently glue onto the door skin because there's no way to make a mold, right? There's no way to make a mold that can have a 90 degree return, right? So it just, it would never release. Now you can make a two piece mold, but I don't even know how you would get the carbon fiber to, you know, bend and turn around this corner and still be a, a good looking product. So remember there is a, again, this is gasketed all along this edge. So this edge is not seen. So a little, uh, you know, a, a stop here and a glue line isn't going to kill uh, the, the whole door structure. Okay, so that's, um, that's enough for the detail and we're get rolling right now and start to get the flanging put on the project. Okay, so we're getting moved on with the flanging. Uh, I decided in this video to give you a full look in at the process of flanging one of these molds. Uh, just because I, I haven't done that in the past. The only other video where I've really given you the full look in uh, was on the trunk video. And that's been watched lots of times even though the sound is terrible. Sorry about that. Uh, anyway, these are different techniques actually at this point. So I'm, I'm now exclusively pretty much using the uh that aluminum flashing material again you find it down in the roofing section of your home center you're going to find a lot of roofing section in your home center uh the references going on today but i'm just going to show you some of the challenges though um we're all a little bit pressed for time right now at least i sure am so i'm i'm trying to bring you some of this sort of it, this is a reasonable effort i put a lot of time into doing this flanging i want these molds to be very nice but you can just watch me struggle with it here so i'm trying to get it glued in now i've cleaned the edges of these molds i've done everything i can and i just the stuff look at that like it's just a wavy mess at this point so i'm working away at it and i'm getting frustrated with it this is exactly what will happen to you this is that uh, angle 
It's just a piece of wood trim that I'm going to use to create the return angle out of carbon fiber. So I was getting frustrated uh, with the way that this is going because I thought, well, the more I work with the aluminum, uh, the less fun it is to get it put in. So then, I mean, I pull it all apart, and you're going to watch me do this more than once. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, being, a, being an old hockey player, this really helps because I know that uh, a little bit of torch work and the hot milk glue comes right off. Uh, <laughs> it's like the sticks of old. And then uh, I first backed it up with this foam backer board. So uh, I needed to get it a little bit stiffer, but I couldn't put the foam backer board all the way down to where this uh, material has to fit inside the back side of the door. So you know, I just carefully cut it out uh, and then things start to go a little bit better, right? So we're, we're e easily to get it in. Now the hot melt glue is kind of a pain to work with, especially with the longer pieces because my garage is cold. It's still winter here in Canada, so uh, trying to get this stuff nailed down is difficult. Like I'm working at about, it's probably 10 degrees Celsius out there right now, uh, normally when I'm working in it. Okay, so that material that I'm using there, that's uh, roof edging actually for putting shingles on roofs. It's, uh, it works great. I just make a few relief cuts to get around the drains for the door, and then I'm going to try to get it stuck down. Now I have cleaned everything out really well. You can see here... There it is, uh, the cleaner that I'm using in the rag. So I've cleaned everything off. I've, I've scuff sanded the bottom of it. I've done everything I could. And it's still going to take me at least three times uh, to get this particular piece of metal to be stuck on. Like as soon as you start sticking it on, you'll hear it kind of pop. And then you're done. you got to take it off and start all over again. Uh, then I back tape it once it's up there. Once I'm sure that it's uh, the glue's actually stuck down. Now, what I was finding that the problem was, as you'll watch me put the sides in here, uh, is that the uh, I had a paint failure. The the old paint that's on the back of this wasn't really stuck to the edge of the door. It was just, you know, that's just the overspray. So although it was clean and although I had scuff sanded it, I really should have taken it right down to bare metal on the back edge and just saved myself all the trouble because you'll watch me take each one of these pieces of flashing is going to come on and off at least three times before it'll actually get stuck down. Like there it is, on, off, on, off. And every time it comes off, you got to clean it up and you got to put it back in. So you can't get frustrated with this stuff and you can't sort of, you know, don't get bullish with it. You just have to be very patient and work your way through it extremely carefully. So uh, I try to mold each one of those sections. So I'm putting the, the bends and curves and things from the door in very accurately just to try to make a really good looking finished product so that when I'm working with this mold, I'm not going to be annoyed by the fact that I have more work to do later uh, to get around weirdnesses or strange areas or whatever seams cuts problems okay so i'm going to bend all the little areas in it's easy enough to, to bend and move uh there twice for this one to get it to stick in uh and then the foam board uh, goes in on the back side of it and then we back tape it you can see the blue uh, duct tape in the back all right now the wood pieces as we uh, get them going they will not behave properly unless they're primed so a little bit of that duratec primer just put on with a brush it's fine and I'm just going to sand it smooth when I'm done. And then the aluminum foil tape goes on uh, and you're going to tape all the seams and edges uh, that are where you've joined one piece of flashing to the other. Uh, now along the bottom edge here where that um, the roof flashing was, uh, the tape is just too sticky and too wide to fit in there. So I split it in half and then bent it in half and then I got that uh, that put in there and that seemed to work. Now that roof edging is used on that bottom edge flange because you you can't just flange straight off of that bottom of the door. You want that to be, you can see there, you want it to return at sort of 90 degrees uh, and that'll make for a much better mold uh, in terms of how it looks. Now here what I'm doing is I'm trying to get the this, this uh, aluminum tape to back up all the holes that are in the door for the trim. It's a, something I should have done before the door was at this stage, but you know, oh, there's my toque. Uh, by the way, I've sold one of those. So if, uh, if anyone wants to support the channel, buy a toque. It's, they're great. Uh, fill the larger holes with the aluminum flashing material. Back up the smaller holes with the foil tape. Uh, and then you're going to use this plasticine material. Now, if you can get the filleting wax, which is made by Pelican, uh, so you can look it up. I can't actually buy it in, in Canada, so it's it's available on Amazon in the U.S., but it's not available in Canada, so uh, I'm stuck with what it is that I can buy. Anyway, so here you go. Here's another problem. So we're still going to deal with issues all the time when, when doing this kind of mold flanging material. So here we go. Right there, watch that area. just popped right off. 
and it's because I'm putting some downward pressure in order to make that edge nice. Uh, so that just popped that whole piece of trim right off and it was glued on there really well. So it's rework, so clean it all up. Uh, you can't get frustrated at this point. You got nothing else to do but make a good mold. So you really, really have to do a good job uh, with the molds and stuff and get those uh, get those working. So you're gonna hot melt glue the heck out of it. And then I decided to just put those in with Bondo. Because with the Bondo, I get an extra sort of 15 minutes worth of working time and I can very carefully then just go in and sort of fill out those edges all at once. So this worked out really well. Right, I saw I also had to do that on the bottom sides of the doors, right? So the bottom door skin flange uh, is there's a sharp return there, and if you don't fill that entire area right down to the bottom flange, you'll never get the uh, the part out of the mold. That's where it's going to stick in because you've created a lock. So I just filled that entire area all the way down to the bottom of the flange, and then you carefully sand it all off just to make a nice radius corner, and uh, and then you should be good to go. So once all that's done. And then we turn our attention back to getting the areas uh, filleted back in. Now, again, I can't get that uh, filleting wax that Pelican makes. Uh, it's not available in Canada at this point. So uh, I'm just using this plasticine material. But I, this is the best way I've found to do it. And I just discovered this on the last molds is to roll it out. I've got a piece of quarter inch masonite there. So it's nice and hard. I'm rolling it out into a long, thin strip, no more than three millimeters, right? So you long, long, thin strip. And then I put it in. Uh, to where I need to uh, fill the gap and then I'm starting at the back side of it and then I just sort of chip away at it and I move it to the front and then one stripe down the whole thing makes it a perfectly smooth edge. Uh, this I used to not look forward to doing this job and now it just takes a few minutes. Right again with the, uh, the Duratec primer on all of these areas where the Bondo has been applied is the right idea. Uh, if you leave that Bondo raw you're going to have a uh, sticking problem. So you just uh, get it in there, sand it up, and away you go. you again for joining me on this adventure. I really do appreciate all the the likes that I get, all the subscribes uh, that I get, you know, click the click the subscribe button, ring the bell. Uh, that that does help you get a notification of when I've got another video coming up. Uh, I actually don't have a ton of time at home right now despite the pandemic. Uh, do stay uh, safe everyone. Uh, my job is uh, really quite busy at the moment so I'm doing my very best to try to continue to bring you content if you're at home and you're stuck. So we'll all uh, support each other in this, in this bit of a disaster. But uh, stay safe and we'll catch you on the next video.